I think actually you're a very nice person. You're just not a woman, and you're never going to be a woman. And but I you, never, but, but I know that. Right. Do you, Ray J, believe that Danielle is a woman? I believe, like she said, yeah. she's a trans woman. If what what like, is the difference? That's what I'd like you to answer right there. Ray J. What is the difference? Well, is there, but, is there another, is there another word? Let me, but let me, let yes, me, but let me. Is there another word besides like mental word. disorder? But because it is some, it is clear because this is, I don't think this is triggering. I don't know why suddenly people are so triggered by this. It's your mental and something is out of but order. But it's because it's not real, okay. And I'm not going to say nothing to none of the homies, but y'all got to speak up too and just come out and love and hug. Trans and love is that like and, a zero? And, and show <laughs> the compatibility yeah. with what y'all like. So I put on the wig. I looked in the mirror and I went, oh my God, and I was attracted to me. So here we have Candace Owens hosting R&B singer Ray J, who also happens to be producer of a show called The Girls Club, which follows a group of outspoken, reportedly brawling transgender women living together in a Los Angeles mansion. Ray J, apparently now an advocator of transgenderism, is in turn accompanied by the Aussie doll, otherwise known as Danielle, who goes into some detail explaining the life and experiences of a trans person. Of course, the kicker here is that Candace views transgenderism as a mental illness, of which she makes abundantly clear. So let us observe, giving our thoughts along the way. I recently appeared on Don Lemon, uh, and some clips were taken out of that conversation I had with him, particularly a portion when he was talking to me, speaking to me about transgenderism. I explained to him my perspective on transgenderism, that it is a mental disorder. Uh, shortly thereafter, Ray J messaged me on Instagram and said, Candace, I don't feel, and I'm summing up here, I don't feel that you have the full story. I would love to have a conversation um, and introduce you to someone who may be able to provide you a wider perspective. And I said, let's do it. Well, Danielle, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very happy to have you here. Also, very happy that you were willing to even have a discussion because a lot of times you see people that are on opposing sides do not want to speak. And I think that's guided by a lot of fear and sometimes by a lot of cowardice. So why don't we just start by telling us a little bit about your story. Yeah. Um, so I'm from Perth, West Australia, which I'm is Australia. Yeah. <laughs> West South Australia, um, aka the Aussie doll. That's what they call me. Um, Perth, West Australia is the most isolated city in the world. So it's basically on the West and everything else you would have heard about is on the East. My experience as being trans um, dated back to, and I know this is controversial and people are going to be like, uh, when I say it, but the first, um, verbalization of me feeling trans was when I was four and um, my mum told me this when I got older because I'd verbalized to her um, basically that I was comparing myself to my older sister and because I have an older sister and two younger now and um, <clears throat> just feelings and displaying certain things. Most certainly what comes to mind I, I believe Charlize Theron had a daughter or a son but the story goes one day in the bathtub, bathtub my son or daughter looked up at me and said, mommy, I'm a, I'm a girl. And that was it. That Charlize Theron then allowed her child to begin transitioning. And that to me sounds like a mental disorder that the parent is suffering for some reason. And a lot of the times I've noticed this trend that it does tend to be single women that sort of encourage this thing. So I'd like to ask you if you're, you have a son. Mm -hmm. And a daughter. And your son's how old? My son's four. Okay, he's four, perfect and age. My daughter's six. If your son was in a bathtub and your son said anything in the bathtub, dad, I'm a mermaid. Not quite sure why these type of conversations majoritively appear to take place not even in a shower, but in a bathtub. But anyway, let's take a listen. Why would you then say, well, this must really mean that my four-year-old toddler, who also thinks he can fly, who also thinks like Santa Claus is real and can squeeze down the, ch the chimney, why is it this thing that people go, oh, well, this must be a sign that my child's really struggling with identity? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, a, that's very early. I would say just me being a new parent, right? And what's crazy about the mermaid thing, my son likes to follow his sister, right? He loves her and whatever she does, he wants to do. Same with me back then. I used to double dutch and jump rope before I, you know, started to hang out with my friends um, just because I wanted to follow my big sister. She got a mermaid outfit. He wanted one. So I got him a mermaid. He wanted to be a merman but because she was in, you know, she was swimming with the merch. So I'm like, all right, you want to be a merman? Then cool, I'll get you one. Um, 
but I didn't think of it in the sense of that yet, just because, you know, again, they're young and um, and they're learning things as they go, you know. And so, I'm to piggyback off that as well, sorry to cut no. you off, is with, that was like a really valid question, but I have to state that with my mom, what she did was, it wasn't a validation of really how I thought and acted on it straight away. My mom was a listener. So my mom never shut me down for the things that I'd verbalize, but as for like counseling and transition, that was done way later. So if your child came to you at 17, Roy J, and said, I am born into the wrong body and I want to take puberty blockers, what would you say? Well, as a parent, um, man, my kids are four and six, um, you, you don't really know what how you're going to react, but I know for me, I want to be the parent. My kids, should, I want them to be able to tell me anything, like the darkest, the most complicated, like what they're really going to through internally, externally. So I would be super open for super support, right? That's the kind of dad I am. Um, even when my son, he's four, but there's been times where he's been around and we were shooting, whether it's a movie or something, and it was a lot of women around and he said, dad, I love the girls, right? And I went, okay, got it. I mean, I don't know if I should, bring them in now because you're only four. So I would, wouldn't do that. But hey, that's what you like right now. You came to me and said it. You even told your mom, where are the girls at, dad, dad, in front of moms? I said, son, <laughs> we got to, <laughs> you know, and so. So let me get this right. His four-year-old son is telling mom and dad, where's the booty at? In our day, we'd have experienced the proverbial clip around the ear roll for expressing any such dastardly sentiments. Um. I, I would just be there for them. And I think as as society grows and as everybody gains more knowledge um, and, you know, you have friends, right? I have friends. I have friends that are straight. I have friends that are gay. I have friends that are trans. And, um, and, and these are my close friends. And so I don't, me personally, I don't care. But I, I also understand that it's, it's, it's for them to make the choice, not for them to be programmed into a choice that they might not be familiar with and they're just following the trend, right? So that's the, that's where, you know, you straddle the line with everything with marketing and promo. But for me, I mean, I'm in full support of whatever my kids want to do. And, you know- Heroin. The, well, I mean, not that. Pornography. I'm assuming, obviously, not at four years of age, but then Hollywood and said cohort do start their dalliances and entanglements rather young. And we shall not talk about fentanyl. Not That's that. That's not comparable. But I'm saying, He's like, full support of what my kids want to do. And they, it, it no, is no, no, comparable. Like, meaning, like, but no, meaning, like, if they were doing that, please come tell me. Yeah, right. So I can help you. Like, don't push me out to where you don't feel comfortable with telling your dad that you got a problem, right? So, yes, I will be in full support of listening to them and helping them. So as honest as they can be, I want to be the dad to make them feel like anytime I'm going down, anytime I'm going up, whatever, I'm gonna always hit my dad and tell him what's going on. And you said you were 17, that you then realized there was something else that was going on with you. But, you know, just speaking about the development of the human brain, your brain is literally not developed at 17 years old, right? You are not a formed person at 17, 17 year old Ray J, 17 year old Candace. Think about how much I started you at 18. Have Sorry, I just wanted to specify. 17 was um, grade 12 for me. And then I started at 18. And in Australia, 18 is legal, not 21. Well, legal and brain development are two totally different things. For sure. Yes, yeah, so you can go sure. to war, all that stuff. But I mean, true. kids are drinking at 15. That's totally fine. You know, and which I don't support, by the right, way. Right. But, but just to be clear, your brain is not fully, like, like the human right. mind is not fully developed until 26 years old, right? I think it had, I think the experience of the human gets better. So your experience makes you have more knowledge, right? Right doesn't mean that you aren't your greatest at 18 and 19 yeah. and 20, you know, those are the And moments. I was in full knowledge of like my thoughts and, and, and in control over that because you have to remember to take it back. This is not a decision that I made like some random, like, oh, you know what? I want to be a girl at 17 and started 18. To me, I'm too smart for that. That's reckless. I don't think that that's wise. Like you've got to marinate in the decision and that's what I would. Can't help but notice that expressively, 
the Aussie doll has quite a purposefully appropriated tad of an urban twang about their presentation. The, the advice that I give to people all the time, this is not something that you click your fingers for. This for me was over a decade. So when I made my choice at 18, I totally get what you're saying with brain development. But for me, it was just finally time because I had all of that time. For me, this isn't a costume. I can't rip it all off. I know I've got, I'm in glam now because I love glam and, you know, I like to feel and look good, smell good, whatever, whatever. But at home, no makeup on, hair up in a bun is it's giving woman, it's giving what it is. Okay, so you so it's not a costume. You, you for me. genuinely believe that you're a woman. Hundred percent. Do I think I'm a born female biological woman? Absolutely not. I'm a trans woman and I'm well aware that mm -hmm. I'm not a biological woman. And I want to make that statement very loud that's a good... because that's where it gets crossed and where I think trans people need to come to the table is, is understanding that and letting biological women know that we're well aware we're trans women. And if people are out there saying anything otherwise, that's something that I don't want to back. Right. <laughs> because so now, now we're my... bridging the gap. Right. Now we're bridging the gap, Candice. Yeah, I'm well aware of now who I am and what I am. Do you, Ray J, believe that Danielle is a woman? Would usually be a humdinger of a question, but let's hear Ray J's answer. Yes. I don't, I've never once, even every time we talk, I've yeah. always said, Danielle, she, I, I'm, that's, that's what it is. Like, and all of my friends that are in the community, I mean, I, we have a whole gay agency, right? Shout out to Tarad and Dumpin' D. It's the full gay agency, right? And then we have the girls club, right? So there's different layers and different, um, different things that people like to do in their world that they like to be outside of work. But when we all come to work, everybody's on time, everybody's on point. What happens after work? I mean, it ain't... You know what I'm saying? I, I could only imagine what some of my other friends do. Some of my um, boom operators and camera guys, they, they, they real freaks, right? So who knows what they doing? All I know is that when we did the girls club, we shot it in Agora Hills. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of intense um, drama. You know, everybody was trying to tell their story. So it got, it got really dramatic and it was a lot of like um, physical altercation. So we had to call another security team in. Security team got there. And the security team ended up falling in love with all the girls there. So they never left. I can only imagine some of you, the listener, with all type of uninvited debaucherous scenarios, pendulating the exacerbated brain cells upon hearing Ray J's last statement. Wow. So the, so the security team would hang out with the girls after the set. And when it was eight o'clock call time, they just got out to bed and went to work, got dressed, right? Because everybody started locking in. And that showed me that, you know, it's, uh, you know, people after work and people in their own time is going to love doing what they do. So I just want to be clear. Danielle, I think you're a very kind person. You're a very open person. I'm, I'm just so happy that you're willing to have this discussion. But Ray J, when you say that you believe. And shout out to the security team. You believe that Danielle is a woman. You believe that I am a woman. I believe, like she said, yeah. she's a trans woman. Okay. And she made it very clear that they understand the difference. But if what, someone what like- What is the difference? That's what I'd like you to answer, Ray J. Ray J. What is the difference? Well, I would say what's the difference is- A caricature of, hmm, you got me Candice, but I'm about to attempt to wing an answer. Nudge, nudge, help me Aussie doll. What you have. Like what, what's on you, you know what I mean? Um, and there is really no difference but what your preference is outside of work, outside of us coming together and doing what we need to do to, to finish the goal at hand. No, but what, what is the difference between me and Danielle? She's a trans woman and you're a and the biology. biological woman. Is that what, yeah, because I'm still being, I'm edu getting educated every day on it, right? Right, asked a lot of questions. But you're getting educated on speech rather than being educated on what you know to be right and Well, wrong. no, I know. Mr. Ray J appears to be struggling with articulating the intimacies, no pun intended, of his business acquisition, thus leaving his rear guard exposed to a valid Candace verbal maneuver swipe. I, well, not right and wrong, I just know yeah. what, What's the difference? So yeah. if you have to differentiate, and I'm, I'm glad that you are, because I do think that that's much more respectful than where a lot of people are coming from. Um, 
who self-identify as transgendered. But if you have to delineate, if you have to say, I'm a trans woman and Candace is a woman, then that necessarily means that we are not the same, right? We are something different. I think everybody is different. Every human is different. Yeah. Nobody's the same. Yeah, I agree. I know who I am and it's not a joke and it's not a costume. And I wanted to double back on something really important. And obviously it's your opinion, so I don't even want to be disrespectful on it. But I know a lot of times you've stated that, um, you know, trans being transgender, because I don't like the word transgenderism, is um, a mental disorder. But you know, the, the APA states that it's not a mental disorder at all. And they're psychiatrists, they're yeah. trained psychiatrists. And I knew you probably knew I'd bring this up, but you know, the APA states that it's not a mental disorder at APA. all. So that's the American Psychiatric Association and also the World Health Order. And what they state is that it's actually just obviously gender dysphoria. And then the description from gender dysphoria is the feeling of distress you feel from me? gender dysphoria. Everything and every individual individual is different and that's why I'll always preach that point but it's not a disorder I don't have a mental disorder like I don't even think about this on a day-to-day -day basis but I am willing to come to the forefront and speak about trans rights and transness because I am but I always want to show people worldwide that you can clearly see we're all different and you know we have different wish, backgrounds like I wish some of the guys um that that you know that are are, are like in love and infatuated in this relationship, I wish they would come out and be like, yeah. yo, this is what it is. Because some of them yeah. are my friends. And I'm like, you, whenever you feel like it, but you not wrong. And I'm not going to say nothing to none of the homies, but y'all got to speak up too and just come out and love and hug. Trans and love is that like and, a zero? And, and show <laughs> the compatibility yeah. with what y'all like and what, what, what's going on in the real world. Yeah. So my understanding of this is that Ray J is requesting that his homies, as he put it, vacate their allegorical closet, and I am pretty certain that many outside of their inner circle will be categorically passing up on that recommendation. But does she have a mental disorder? Yeah. If you are living your life as something that you are not, and you believe inside of you that you are this, right. she's not hurting anybody, but she is suffering okay. from a mental disorder. Now, now, okay, and now this is where, this is where things- The humorous irony here is that when Candace diligently explains her interpretation of a mental disorder, attributing it to a person wanting so badly to be what they are not, Ray J perks up and says he knows a person and then points at her. Get tricky. I think actually you're a very nice person. You're just not a woman and you're never gonna be a woman. And but I you, ne but, but I know that. Right, exactly. And that's why I wanted and to so, make but, that but, point, but people yeah. weaponize that. See, people, people love being like, you're not a woman and I'm like, yeah, cool. Great point. I agree. And then where do they go? Because see, they're weaponizing it because they want to put us down. Like, you're not a real girl. You never will be. Yeah, I'm aware. I have a mother and three sisters. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm well aware. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Right. And I love and the way I am. Asking. It always comes back to us being delusional, but we're not. We know we're not biological women. So it's scored. And, that's, and that's, see, now we it's can all be friends. Reality. We can all go out and, I want to ask I mean? you a question because yeah, sure. I actually find your energy like, you know, like I feel like you're a strong woman, you're wise, you're intellectual, and I actually get good energy off you. I'm like an energy kind of gal. And I want to ask you, In I know it's only been a short time, but us conversing and, you know, I can tell you're listening when I'm talking about my upbringing and stuff. Do you see me as like a woman, a trans woman and stuff, or do you see me as like he and like a costume? I think that you're wearing a costume. Okay. And, and do you see me as a boy or do you see woman? me as a trans woman? Of course, Candace will relay a brutally honest answer as she sees it. I mean, I just, do you think so I'm a feminine boy? I just think that we've adopted these words. I think that you have gender dysphoria. Right. You feel happier in this. I'm time. more meaning physicality because obviously you've listened. You, any person, I could get Ray J. I mean, make up. Oh, no way. Right. No, like, no. But I'm, I'm saying like, you know, I, you, you could. Have you seen X Men? I mean, Charlie Theron, the but I'm the, more in makeup. Asking, you can you I'm can more present as a physicality. But even without makeup, like I can get photos and sent to you with me with no makeup, no editing, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm more mean like in the sense because this is also a huge topic that and in um, the trans community we call it um, being real or being passable. Those are just like street languages and. 
um, you know, it, it doubles back to the fact that I don't sit on a couch at a restaurant or at a bus stop or whatever and be like trans or whatever. I actually pass as a biological female. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes my responsibility to every day educate people that I am trans. And that's usually out of respect because I like to be honest with men. I don't like to, you know, deceive anyone or lie or whatever. We would hope so, Aussie doll. But my thing is, is if we were having a conversation and it wasn't about this and we were just vibing or if I went to your church and stuff, like you're not looking at me as like a boy or like glam, Ray and glam. Well, if to be fair, I, I since I knew you were coming here, I feel like it's not right. a fair question to ask because right. but to be clear, there are tons of especially today you could literally look at somebody on the Internet and never know that they lived as yeah. the opposite sex. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. that it, or that they were born. Um, as as the sex that they're not presenting, rather, is the best better way to say it. But to me, I, I don't know. Like, for me, I think that it's just dishonesty. Do you know what I mean? If you're not being honest. If you're not being like, honest. Not, like, like, I, like, 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 one time, and I ain't never told nobody this, but I put on a wig one time, right? <laughs> Yo. And so when I put on the wig, because I was trying to get into this other character, so I put on the wig, I looked in the mirror, and I went, Oh my God, and I was attracted to me. No comment, other than don't tell Dave Chappelle that. Yo, so I took the Ray is the key. Back, and I went, what just happened? He was in character. I didn't know what happened, but I was it's like, true though, because it's I had it on and I went like that because it was in my it was in my um eye. So I went like that and I took it off because I was attracted to me. Yo. And, and I love me, but I didn't know I loved me like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I look good. Mm. So I never did it again. Okay, I'm so happy oh that, that you shared I that. Just, yeah, I don't know why, but I felt like it's good to just be vulnerable here. But yeah, that's what happened to me. This is a safe space. Yeah, thank you. And I, I want to make and, a and gorgeous and woman. You would make a gorgeous make woman. No, I just like me. I was like, damn. And then I went, oh, that's me. And listen to the education that, like, hopefully now we can provide. We have the Gagency, we have Gate RPR, I have Ray Pride, which is a C3. And, and I think we have the girls club. After seemingly thumbling some of Candace's basic questions, why does this strike me predominantly as Ray J seeing a gaping hole in the market and taking advantage of the trans community into making some dollar? And I think it's just having these conversations where people who are straight and people who are gay, people who are trans, they could all just sit down and just, just talk it through, right? As you watch that, you start to understand and get educated on a lot of different things. That, you know, my opinions haven't changed yeah. on the issue. And one of the biggest reasons which I wanted to communicate to you from the conservative community and why we feel like we have to be so strong on... And, so, and on, that the conservative uh, on, community meaning the straight community or just the conservative community? Cons conserv po politically conservative. And the reason why this matters so much, especially deeply for those of us who have kids and see what's happening in the school system, is because at the moment that you say that there is no objective reality, everything becomes possible. And some people hear that and they're like, yay, Disney World, everything becomes possible. But the reality is, is that if you say there's no such thing as a male and there's no such thing as a female and anybody can decide what they are when they want, they can say I'm a different race, I'm transracial, you know, I, I'm transsexual, I'm transgendered, then at event eventually and very quickly we will wind up at people saying that, and there have been examples of this, people saying that they're actually a different age. So you have a 60-year-old man, but it's not funny because this is real. But you, yeah, this is no, real. You have, you have a 60-year-old man who is saying that he self-identifies as yeah. a 13-year-old, and these people go and they commit acts of pedophilia. Yeah. This has happened, right? And they have, and places, so then, they have but, places where they what, go and be babies, and they like, right, like, exactly. Yeah, so, and, and this yeah. is real. And so it's, this is, and yeah, this is all going to get added onto wide. the LGBT. I don't view. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to wipe your butt. But you say you don't want that. You say that that people like that because I've heard that in different statements and once again it's like crazy that as a trans person under the umbrella I'm just lumped with these people but, because but maybe that's their perception their perception yeah. of life and I get that you don't identify as that but it is ideologically speaking the same thing if we don't say that there is an objective reality it would actually be better if a trans person said I 
accept this is actually a mental disorder. I don't want to say to people, because by the way, people have other mental disorders. Bipolar, I've got people have this. That's why we spend them. Is there, but, is there another, is there another word? Let me, but let me, let yes, me, but let me. Is there another word, Ken, besides like mental word. disorder? But because it is, some, it is okay, because this, but I don't think this is triggering. I don't know why suddenly people are so triggered by this. It's your mental and something is out of but order. But it's because it's not real, Ken. But it, Candace, as usual, purposefully, provocatively, getting her point across controversially. Reminiscent her discussion with Don Lemon on the English word priorly used to describe a bundle of sticks. Some but, people but, are, okay, some people, but, people don't like to eat food yeah. because they want to be... Just give me one second. Let me I'm just get sorry, through Candace, this, okay? It is, it is, right? So there can be people, that's right, who have body dysmorphia. That is a mental disorder. You have people who are anorexic. I used to have anorexia. I had a mental disorder, okay? I was tiny and I was doing it as a control mechanism. I was very happy. In fact, the only way to actually get better was to accept that this is a mental disorder, okay? I don't have an issue with that term. I don't think it's a problem because at varying points in people's lives, your mental can get out of order. The issue when you don't acknowledge that it is a mental disorder and you instead just insist that like, this is a normal thing and people are born this way means it becomes impossible to attack that person. Ideologically speaking, if you start making laws and saying this is real, then that guy who says I'm 63 years old and I believe but I am 12 on the inside. I never grew up. This is who I am. Peter Pan sent me to Neverland. And he molests a, another girl. And he goes into the courtroom and he says, no, I'm 13. Objective reality yeah, is what Neverland I feel, right? It's how I feel on the inside. And I actually, your honor, feel that I'm actually 16. That's against the law. Now, here's the okay, question. But, the here's, okay, but here's the question. But this is why we have to be a guard. And this is I'm speaking now on behalf of conservatives. We have to be a guard and we have to say, Objective reality exists, okay? Objectively speaking, bipolar, it's a disorder. Anorexia, it's a mental disorder. Transgenderism, bias morphia, it's a mental disorder. This is all mental oh, disorders, sorry. right? And no, there, the are, anorexia there are- is a mental disorder. Being trans is not a mental disorder. So we have to stick to the facts. It is not anorexia so if and schizophrenia. If they're fat is and a... actually they're skinny, you say that's you have a mental disorder. I got right? a good question. And you, But you're saying that you are a male, you believe you're a woman, and that's not a mental disorder. I'm just being specific, trans and anorexia, mental disorder and not mental disorder, the APA. You only have to ask the APA. These are trained psychiatrists. And I understand that conservatives all want to say that's to fill an objective, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Well, it's, they just it's, updated we're not that a manual mental disorder. In, in the last couple of years. Like, yes, exactly, it was literally because it was a mental disorder. But it, no, but it was misinformation and conservatives in the past. And someday didn't... they'll update that same manual and they will say that minor attracted people, which is a term that they're tossing around now because they're saying it's offensive to call them pedophiles and we should instead call them minor attracted people. Someday they're going to push to update the manual then, which is why I insist on being a guard against that. And that's there is legal objective reality. I don't want that attached to anything to, you know, what LGBTQ How do you feel about that? Talking about people saying, I identify as a 12 year old. How many people in the world are st statistically suffering from a mental disorder? It just means that your your mental your mental is out of whack. I think it triggers you because you've gotten it your whole life, and it's, it's not it's, a trigger. But my point is, is that I have to represent not only myself but the community to put out the information out there that's factual. And I know poll. you're a boss with that. You're all about the facts. Yeah. Yeah. The facts are that it's not a disorder for me. I own that I'm not a biological woman and that I'm a trans woman. So that's why I feel like so many people take harm from it respectfully because. There hasn't been chats like this before where people like me have spoken out and said that. Yeah. And that's going to gag gonna, people gonna, yep, because people still. are like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought you go around saying you're biological. Mm -hmm. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. Everything is so specific. And when you start lumping it into terms and into categories, it doesn't work like that. That's not life. We have to be specific with different people in different scenarios. Me uh, next to the next trans girl, we might not meet eye to eye at all. And you might be like, I can understand you but I don't understand what they're saying because mm -hmm. it's just out of field. I feel at the very least respected in the fact that you recognize that you and I are not the same. Yeah. And that, and I will tell you of But we all... are the same, we're all humans. Yeah, we're all Well, humans. you know what I meant by God. that. Well, at least Ray J got one last verbal jab in at the very end. Nonetheless, an insightful conversation. Well, guys, I just want to say uh, thanks for tuning in for this conversation. See you guys for another episode soon.